game too strong, your man too close, he on my phone, about these bills, put mommy on the phone, he ain't never coming on, look, I'm about to go in, I'ma get inside these bitches here like a sun in, I'ma lace the track in the front, make it blend in, pull that shit back so the glue ain't showing on the track, I'm hoeing, hose pipe flowing, about to build a little flower bed he can grow in, got a mothership, we can head to the store in, bound the world streaming, baby, I'ma keep rowing, bitch, I'm from the hood, wish it would, saw your in the club, looking good, I'm a boss and a Hey y'all, this is my great-great-grandma Easter. She was born in 1854. She's my grandma's grandma. My granny told me that everything that Easter taught her, she was going to teach me. And here's what she taught me. She taught me that this is our land. Long before any YT person or anybody got here, we were here. We've always been here. She taught my granny, don't ever believe anything that a YT person says about us because the, everything that they say about us is meant to make them look smarter, better, and stronger. So don't ever believe anything that they say about us. She also taught my granny how to read and write because it was important for her to know if people were writing things about her and how to count money to make sure she wasn't getting cheated. And the reason why Easter taught my granny all of those things is because those are things Easter learned from her grandma. I've done my genealogy all the way, I've gotten back to the early 1600s so far, and I have not found one African or one slave. I found four YT servants who went on to take the names of Easter's daddy and granddaddy. But that's about all I found. But yeah, I just wanted y'all to, to reintroduce y'all to my great, great grandma Easter. And if you believe in past lives and you still here with me, Easter has been with me through this life and a couple other lives. She says I know which ones. I, I don't. I know one but not the other. Anyway, thanks for listening to the story of my great-great-grandma, Easter, born in 1854. Peace. Oklahoma is the capital of black towns, and I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking about right now in the current moment. Let me tell you about it. I'm the young black mayor, your number one history influencer. Redbird is one of my favorite black towns to visit. Right now, it's one of 13 historically all black towns that still exist in the state of Oklahoma. People know Oklahoma for Black Wall Street, but what they don't know is Oklahoma had more than 100 Black Wall Streets at one point. Just smaller versions. 13 of them still exist today in the form of black towns. Historically all black towns. Oklahoma has more than any other state. The reason my state ended up with so many black towns is directly connected to the intermingling of black and red people in Indian Territory. Black people in Oklahoma were former slaves of the five civilized tribes. When the five civilized tribes fought with the South during the Civil War and lost, the freedmen in Indian Territory were not citizens of the tribes or the United States. So we built black towns. To stay up on your hidden history, lock in with me. Truly your number one history influencer. Conversation is circulating about studies that have found that by 2053, the median wealth for the black family will likely plummet to zero. I'm sure we understand by now that there are systemic issues at play and political reform is obviously going to be needed to make substantial improvements in regard to the Black family's ability to generate wealth and pass that wealth to the next generation. I'm talking pay equity laws, investing in education, affordable housing and home ownership assistance, criminal justice reform, reducing mass incarceration, health equity, paid family leave. All of these areas are going to require enforced policies in order for us to rise above just breaking even at zero. But while we wait on political reform because we know how long that can take, there are some things that you can incorporate into your life now so that this is not your household's reality in decades to come. As I've said before, we can't always control what the external circumstances are, but we have control over how we respond to them. So the first thing that we can do is correct the spin problem. The black dollar generates a lot of economic activity in this country. I'm not telling you don't spend any money because that's ludicrous, but you have to learn how to budget. You have to make sure that you are paying yourself and supplying resources to your future 
before you go paying someone else's mortgage and funding someone else's vacation. There is absolutely no reason that you are buying a $300, $500 shirt and your savings account is under $1,000. The priorities in spending have to be rebalanced and learning how to budget will help with that. Don't fight me on this next category, but number two is going to be co-living, specifically within the institution of marriage. As much as we have made marriage about love in this country, the origin of that institution institution actually centers around wealth distribution and allocation between families. I didn't verify this, but I'm almost certain that one of the reasons our median income is going to drop to zero is because we are not partnered. Even if you make over 100K today as a single individual, if you partner with someone else who also makes over 100K, you will obviously be much better off. And I'm sure we already understand that the median salary for Black people is not 100K. So we have to come together. All of these arguments about provider this, provider that, we are not at a point where we can even have those conversations. A lot of us cannot even survive on our own. I'm sorry to say that, but someone has to bring us back into reality. And that ties into my number three, which is better family planning. We have to stop sending our children to school, to higher education, and requiring that they take out an excessive amount of student loans. Too many of us have a student loan balance that surpasses our annual salary. And we know it's extremely difficult to build wealth when you are in crippling debt like that. So to sum it all up, the plan for us is to be mindful with our spending, to spend our dollars where it makes sense to do so, then increase our financial capacity capacity by marrying appropriately, and lastly, executing better financial strategies in that institution. If I should make another video explaining more in depth one of these situations, let me know and I'd be happy to do so. But come 2053, I'd really hate to see that be the reality for us. What's going on, B1 family? So just for transparency, I will have this white man on a couple compilations because he says a lot of interesting things that I think white people need to be on as far as their placement or involving themselves in black issues so uh, you may have seen him before i don't know if you have if you haven't he's i think he's on the level i'm not gonna give him a 100 percent pass i'm not gonna just invite him to the cookout no we ain't doing that we don't we don't play like that over here however when the message is on point and the credit can be given credit can be given who cares? It was in the past. Why can't we leave it there? Slavery happened all over the world. Enough of this division. Why can't we just be cool and let everything go, man? C couple things. Just because you don't care doesn't mean other people also don't care. Two, slavery did happen everywhere. You're right. Chattel slavery, however, did not. America was like, oh, let's take it up a notch. That's a, that's a whole nother video. Okay, here's one of the reasons we can't just leave it in the past. The effects of it today. Say your grandmother, real sweet lady, right? Gam Gam. Let's say it was illegal for her to learn to read. Not just we won't teach her, if I catch her learning to read. Grandpa too. Think of all the things you need to read. Legal documentation, medical documentation, you are and aren't allowed in this place, signage. Literal rules. It's illegal for you to learn how to read the rules to this game that we all have to agree to. You have to learn by trying things and being wrong. Gam Gam and Grandpa do at least. They decide to have children. They've missed out on all these things that they have to learn because it's illegal. There's a literacy law. Those children while they go to school, can't even go to their parents for help because it was illegal for them to learn the things that their children are learning. So while they're figuring out these rules, everybody around them, who looks like me, already knows the rules. Not only did they know the rules, but they were able to write the rules. Read the rules and write the rules. Research the rules. Find loopholes in those rules. Then fast forward one more generation where we have people about your age who are going, well, why is this a problem? Why can't we just let this go and forget? Because those people are behind because of the system designed by these things. And it touches like a million other things. So I guess I care, man. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to really realize that racism really doesn't exist against black people like you previously thought. I keep getting comments and people message me like, bro, you know that damn well that racism exists. Bro, give me a real example of real racism today. Give me one real example. If you're black watching give me one real example of real racism. I'm talking about what y'all talk about like from back in slavery times. Give me a real example. Not one that you made up in your mind and said, oh, well, this is kind of, no, 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 not kind of. I need a real example. Yeah. Yeah, he's a tether. Look at the hairline. Look at the face. Look at the skin routine.
they not like us. Ferguson, Missouri, has settled a class action suit agreeing to pay thousands of African Americans $4.5 million for arresting them on trumped up charges and placing them in what is being called a modern day debtor's prison. Dating white men is not going to solve your problem. And this is coming from someone who exclusively dated white boys. It's the same shit, different flavor. You hate black men because the first black man in your life lets you down. I get it. I'm the president of Club Daddy Issues. But baby, changing the race that you date ain't gonna change your self-hatred. I mean, let's keep it a buck. If you hate black men as a black woman, you really hate yourself. I've been screwed over by white boys, I've been screwed over by black boys. An asshole is an asshole regardless of what color it is. You looking for a great white man like there aren't great black men in abundance out here. And if you don't believe that, then you just aren't the woman that you need to be to attract them. Just keeping it real. Maybe you should try working through your trauma because trust me, ain't nothing better than being married to a good ass black man. So don't blame black men, blame your trauma. The Democrats are ready to jump ship. Okay, do it. Y'all just tell me who the nominee is gonna be. Let me know when you guys are finished fighting amongst yourselves who I gotta vote for in November to keep Hitler out the White House. That's oh, please, sir. Please tell me who I'm supposed to vote for because I just don't know how to vote. So y'all go ahead and tell me who I'm supposed to vote for so then I can know what I'm supposed to do. She's supposed to be a journalist. This is pathetic. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just had a question. I'm not really sure if I even understand. I'm not really sure, but I've never came to these meetings before. So I don't really know what's going on. But I'm sorry, I do know what's going on, but, and I really, I am for it. But I just had a question. It's like, somebody told me that like the refer reparations were only going to um, possibly somebody who was a defendant of a slave or something else, I don't know. But I just, I don't know if anybody else does, but isn't that, that like a little divisive? Because if you're not a defendant of a slave, you won't be receiving anything? Exactly. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Don't, don't play with them! Don't, 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 don't play with them! You don't have the right to come in here and fuck with us! Don't fuck with me! Don't fuck with me! I don't give a fuck, bro! I don't give a fuck! My people are stuck with me! Don't fuck with me, you fucking weirdo! Louisiana Creoles have never been black Americans. That doesn't even make any sense because Louisiana belonged to the French. An American is the descendant of an Anglo-Saxon. It's so weird to me that a lot of Louisiana Creoles take pride in the fact that their ancestors were enslaved by the French instead of the British like the rest of us black Americans. Like I always knew some Creoles wanted to separate themselves and not be associated with the broader black American community. And I get why, since back before America brought the Louisiana Territory from the French, Creoles were considered their own ethnic group until they eventually got forced and segregated in with black Americans where we exchanged and created new culture, eventually making them a black American subgroup. But a lot of these Creole separatists will tell blatant lies like this to feel some sort of superiority over other black Americans. And then after Louisiana was sold to the United States, they brought all that bullshit skin color as identity down here with the Jim Crow era, forcing people with brown skin to identify as black. First off, the French was already classifying black people in the territory as black long before the purchase happened. The French had a caste system where black people were on the bottom as slave labor. The only difference y'all had was the French was willing to mix with the enslaved more, and it was a little easier for an enslaved person to become a free man under the French than under the British, and I hate the fact that some of y'all take pride in that. I say what I said. I am not black or African American. You see that? You like that? If you look close, you can see she's in the sunken place. It's Creole race. Let's get the help of artificial intelligence to help us out. No, comma. The term Creole is not a racial label. It can refer to people of any race or ethnicity. Origin, when it started, when it was created, the original meaning 
right? The purpose of it, right? Originated in the Caribbean in the 16th century. This is the 1500s, right? To distinguish people born in French, Spanish, and Portuguese colonies from those born in their homelands, right? In Louisiana, the term Creole was used to describe people born in the colony, regardless of their race or ethnicity. Let me tell you what it's all about, man. The reason why you see these sisters trying to say, oh, I'm not black, I'm Creole, when it's clearly not a racial designation, the reason they're trying to say that, to separate themselves from black people, is because of the lineage, right, their ancestors, telling them that because their families were mixed with the Germans who were changing their name to French, right? This is when they first came over here, Germans, because they were the first immigrants to New Orleans. Give y'all some history for free, right? They were the first immigrants. They started changing their names to French names, right? In the original Code Noir, in the original version, if an enslaved African slept with a white man, she was free, the kid was free, and the white man had to marry her. Think about that flex when half of us was still being owned. Think about that. Do you get it? This is the lineage of those sisters. They held on to that, that separation. Oh, our family's mixed. Oh, we mixed with them. So when we were using the designation of Creole to simply say, hey, we were all born in Louisiana. We weren't born in these other places. We originated here because that's what the term means. They use it to separate themselves from black people and say, oh, we this race because we mix with these white folks and we got all this and we got that and they don't have this. They created that social construct in their families that had wealth and influence to put that stuff on like a, a census or something like that. But how could we be the same race if I'm sitting next to you taking that census and all my family lineage is from France and we all white and I could check off Creole sitting right next to you and all your family Spanish, all your lineage Spanish, all born Louisiana, I could check Creole and all, and all y'all black, I mix me to check Creole, but we all the same race, even though my lineage all German or French, your lineage all Spanish, mine black mixed, but we all the same race. They created Creole, started using the term Creole to try to separate themselves from us because they had been getting a Whoopi Goldberg cont contagio. You feel me? Hey, yeah, make sure y'all vote. <laughs> but yeah, man, appreciate the comments, man. Y'all still walk right here, man. Choose up. And it can be like, I'm not black. Meanwhile, the picture of their abuelita in the living room. Do you want to know why most Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, particularly the Afro-Latinos, the black Latinos, don't like to claim blackness or African or Afrocentrism? You want to know why? Because when slavery was going on, the breaking of the slave was so horrendous in the Caribbean, you couldn't imagine. Not to say over in the United States and in the southern plantations, we didn't have our fair share of nightmares. Best believe we did. But in the Caribbean, it was a totally different beast. We were in the Caribbean in 1555, and we got fucked up out there. Really fucked up out there. They put up something called the caste system, which is racial hierarchy. Did you know that? Spanish people, white Spanish people, then people born in New Spain of Spanish descent, Mestizos, basically Spanish and Native American descent. Native American, then African. So don't tell me there's no such thing as a race thing in the Caribbean. There is. There's colorism. There's all of that. There's also some things where they want to perfect the race, basically. Don't date anybody darker or Afrocano or Negro. So you be careful of that. So that's taught in the Caribbean. Also, also, another factor is, because they're also very broken and suffering from self-hatred, what happens is, during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, when a lot of people from the Caribbean were migrating, immigrating to America, what was going on in America at the time? Segregation. Jim Crow. The Civil Rights Movement was just starting to kick off a little bit. So a lot of our Afro brothers, Afro Latino brothers and sisters was witness what African Americans were going through. And you know what? They didn't want no piece of that. So they, what they, so to, to escape persecution, I'm Hispanic. 
I'm Dominican, I'm Republic, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. That's how it came to be. That's how it came to be. I always think I'm white until I tell them I'm European and then it'd be like, oh, you're still white. Bitch. Bitch, if I told you I speak a different language and I'm European, Bosnian to be exact, bitch, that's not white. White is trailer trash, motorcycle, cigarette smoking. That's what white is. The fuck y'all 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 be getting shit confused like the fuck I can speak my language Yemen to Michael put me kudats Is that many pitas like why you asking me too many questions I'm sorry but um are the whites having a diaspora war Is that what this is cuz I'm pretty sure that was a white man Now I could be wrong but why does he sound like that he actually sounds like a gay black man or a ghetto black girl. I mean, look at this clip. It's a real one birthday, big 26, real Virgo shit. You know, what the fuck going on, bitch? I'm not finna play with none of y'all hoes. Bitch, I'm playing with none of y'all motherfucking hoes. Fuck real Virgo shit. Real Virgo shit. <laughs> if this not a bitch from the hood, then I don't know what is. Like it is it's giving cosplaying black woman gay black man. But you I'm so confused. But is this what we look like when we're arguing amongst one another? I'm not like this, I'm not like that. But we're like, you know. That was very confusing for me. It was so easy. All you had to do was shut the fuck up. You didn't have to come traipse your ass under my motherfucking comment. But here we are. Jamaicans are Latino, like I fucking said. I told your ass to go read a book. But no, no. Your defiant ass don't want to fucking... And then you going to backsass me? You read more books than me? See, and that's when I had to respond because I know you a liar. You lie like a motherfucking Persian rug. You don't even know how to make yourself not look stupid. So what the fuck you mean you read more than me? Hey, sir, what is a Latino? I'm about to gather this motherfucker. Don't motherfucking thing you want to correct me, bitch. A Latino is a native or inhabitant of Latin America or a person of Latin American origin living in the United States. And I know you don't know how to read. That's why I read it to you. What is Latin America, Siri? Expeditiously, there's 33 countries in Latin America, and they consist of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Panama, Belize, Haiti, who is also Latino, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. What that say right there? What that fucking say right there? Didn't I say that Jamaica is part of Latin America? Like I fucking said? I didn't ask for no fucking replies on my comment, motherfucker. I said it right the first time. I knew what the fuck I said before I said it, because I don't say stupid shit. Stupid. Nobody tell you to come up here trying to correct me, bitch. Now you looking stupid. If you wasn't so motherfucking enamored with whiteness, white bitches that speak Spanish, you would know this already, motherfucker. Hispanic and Latino don't mean the same thing. It ain't, and neither one of them are racist. Why? Why? Why are you so slow? Why are you so willfully ignorant? Why would you contest a point that you had never even looked up why would you speak on something in which you do not know why would you try to correct somebody about some shit that you don't even fucking know for your goddamn self you don't know shit about nothing ever so i advise you to just shut the fuck up now i knew from uh shout out to our brother Tariq that haitians were hispanic latino hispaniola Haiti, Dominican Republic, but Jamaicans? Hey, I'm not Jamaican. I'm Foundation of Black Americans, so I'm gonna let them. Are they, 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 you know, they little quarrel, little infighting. So, I guess we learned something new today, fam. Nah, because some of y'all are confused, so let me help y'all out. As of recent, I just found this out. I don't know if you know, but as of recent, there's been a lot of Palestinian creators making a lot of anti-black content. Now, because of that, I got people in my comment section asking me things like, oh, do you feel stupid yet for promoting and, and, and helping out Palestinians 
going through a genocide in Gaza. I'm not gonna show the comment because I'm not trying to air anybody out. That's not what this video is about. So I'm gonna answer those questions, not in the comment section. I'm gonna answer it right here because I feel like a lot of people need to know this. Like I feel like it's not just those people that need to hear what I'm about to say. Everybody needs to hear it. Let me backtrack a couple years ago. You remember when Kanye was going through his mental breakdown? Like he was going through a crazy meltdown, like wild meltdown. He's probably going through one right now, but he was going through a major meltdown at one point. Y'all remember that, right? I stopped fucking with the dude because of two things. One, he said slavery was a choice. Once he said that, I was like, oh, nah, I'm out. I'm gone. I couldn't even believe that that came out of his mouth. Two, he was spitting a lot of anti-Semitic rhetoric. Not the anti-Semitic shit they talking about now. I'm talking real anti-Semitic shit. I said, nah, I can't follow you no more. I can't fuck with you no more. Fast forward to earlier this year when I started doing a lot of research on what has been going on in Gaza, right? Not, not, not just October 7th, what, what's been going on. I'm talking about from World War II, right? I realized to myself, oh, nah, something diabolical is going on over there, right? So I already knew what side I was on. So when I started speaking out for Palestinians on Twitter and on threads, the amount of Jewish people who were calling me the N word hard R was crazy. The fact that they said it wasn't even the full shocker. It was the frequency and the amount of people saying it shocked the fuck out of me. In all my years, I have never had a Jewish person call me the N word ever. But the way they were saying it on Twitter, the way it was just rolling off their tongue, you could tell they've been saying that shit for a minute. It was just too easy. It's like y'all been practicing. We talking about practice? Yes, we talking about practice. They had practice, you could tell. Now, does that make me feel bad about boycotting one of my favorite artists? I'm gonna get to that answer in a little bit. Fast forward a little bit more now, I'm not only speaking up about the genocide, I'm now promoting the GoFundMes for Palestinians in Gaza so that they can feed their family, get medical care, yada, yada, yada. You know, regular human shit. At that time, I was promoting my film. I have a screenplay that I spent three years of my life working on. Three years of my life. It was very important to me. I told myself, you're gonna have to do one or the other. You can't do both. You can't be asking people for to crowdfund your film while also donating to people in need. So I made a sacrifice and said, I'm gonna continue to promote their GoFundMe because it's the right thing to do. I stopped crowdfunding for my film, a script I worked really, really hard on so that I can get people to donate to people in need. That's what I wanted. I stopped, I stopped promoting myself to promote other people. I knew that when I decided to, to speak out on it, my account would suffer because I'm promoting something on this app that this app don't want me to promote. I got a million followers. My engagement on this app is the same as people who have 5,000 followers. I got 26,000 followers on Insta. And the engagement over there is sometimes better. How? I literally have over 900,000 more followers over here. How? I also eat off this page, right? I get money off this page. I knew my money was gonna suffer at some point because I was promoted something that the this app obviously doesn't want me to promote. I knew all of that and I did what I did anyway because I thought it was the right thing to do. I still think it's the right thing to do. Fast forward to now, I'm starting to see a lot of Palestinian creators making a lot of anti-black content out of nowhere. I'm not gonna say who the creators are. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find out on your own, but I'm not trying to call anybody out. That's not what this video is about. I made a video about black and Palestinians going at it as a little jokey joke. After that, I started seeing the videos. I feel like this came out of nowhere. Like, where the fuck did this come from? They going out of their way to be anti-black because you could criticize Kamala all you want. You don't need to bring up the fact that she black. You doing that on purpose because you're trying to get at black people. You know what y'all doing. Also, I'm not seeing other Palestinian creators going at those Palestinian creators and saying, hey man, that, that's wrong. That's wrong. That, that literally has nothing to do with anything. Why are you doing that? Y'all reminding me of the cops. You know how they like to say, oh, it's just one bad apple, right? But then nobody's saying anything about that bad apple, right? Bad apple does a bad apple thing and everybody's okay with it. But then they mad that we say ACAB. I digress. Now, do you think all of that is making me feel bad for the sacrifice that I made before? 
No! Because I thought it was the right thing to do and I still think it's the right thing to do. But now y'all got me looking crazy to black people who was minding their business. But let's be serious. They was gonna mind their business regardless. They wasn't gonna say shit about Palestine, Haiti, Congo, Sudan. They probably didn't even say nothing during the Black Lives Matter movement, right? They was always gonna be quiet, so I'm not worried about them. But that's how y'all got us looking now in these streets, in these TikTok streets. You got us looking crazy. But I'm digressing again. Let's get back to the point. My point is, did I stop following and supporting one of my favorite artists so that Jewish people could give me a hug? No. I did it because I thought it was the right thing to do. When I started speaking up about the Palestinian genocide that's happening and promoting their GoFundMes and stop promoting my film that I worked three years on, did I do that so Palestinians could give me a hug? No. I did it because I thought it was the right thing to do. I still think it's the right thing to do. My point is, no, I don't feel stupid about it. I don't feel stupid about it. If I let the wickedness of a few people change who I am, change what's in my heart, who would I be? I'd be y'all people, the people who mind y'all business for the wrong reasons. I'd be just like you. I move off my morals, my principles. Hope that answers your question, dickhead. So Domo Draper is a pretty cool content creator. However, he is not FBA. Thus, his response, as you see it, that's why we've delineated. We've understood, we start to understand and see the culmination of how much work we would do and how much reciprocation there was and how much appreciation we got along with the insurmountable disrespect that they would show because well, we're not doing enough. That's why we delineate. That's why it's FBA over everyone. That's why it's B1 family. No disrespect to this brother, but it, it, clearly it's bothering him. But he's like, no, nah, well, my morals, my principles, brother, if you get disrespect, if you're doing all that caping for somebody and receiving constant disrespect and it's never enough and you are still trying to cape, but I, I don't know what to tell you. But then again, that's what makes us foundational black Americans. <laughs> wow. Motep Sankofa, the wild guy. All I gotta say is this. Who the hell is Janet Jackson? Who is she? We've never heard anything from her about anything. Police brutality, unarmed killing of, of unarmed, unarmed pew-pewing of black people. Huh? January 6th. Huh? Roe versus Wade. Affirmative action being overturned. Venture fund getting criticized. I'm born and raised in Gary, Indiana. I think I got her by a year, maybe. Okay, we remember everything about her. They haven't done, her or her family has never done anything in Gary. Not one scholarship has been traced to anyone. Not one clinic, not one school, not one hospital, not one rental property, not one apartment building, not a grocery store, not a movie theater. They don't come back and speak with the politicians. Ask the new mayor, Eddie Milton. I think... Tito them may have been there last year to Hard Rock and they had a little photo op, but they've never been involved in the local politics there. They don't do anything. They got demolition. They got growth going on now. They haven't invested a dime. The money coming to Gary is from Ukrainians, East Indians, Asians, Arabs, and other black people. Magic Johnson them investing money. They've never put one quarter back home. Yet she wants to question somebody's blackness. Didn't she just leave an Arabic man with a child? from Qatar or Yemen, many others. So where's her blackness at? We're not going for this. She runs her mouth now? We've never heard anything worth anything. Sandra Bland got pu got unalive. She ain't say nothing then. Any women's issues that's worth noting. She ain't say nothing then. Heck, Diddy's situation now, she ain't said a word about that. But you want to challenge Kamala's blackness? Go sit down, Miss Jackson. We from Gary barely claim you. And we got the receipts to show you all didn't do a darn thing back home. So charity starts at home first. Come on back home and build a few houses, throw up a clinic, throw up a school, even give out a few scholarships first for a comment on someone's blackness. Because honestly, you all have not been black in our eyes for decades. What? So word on the street is that 
y'all trying to cancel Janet Jackson because she made a remark regarding Scamilla's race. <sighs> y'all are tired. Very, very tired. And I could tell a lot of y'all don't read for shit. I'll just follow the headlines and go willy-nilly with whatever the media tells y'all because I went and I read that damn Guardian article and she was set up. Whoever it was who interviewed her, that bitch needs to be canceled. Cancel that bitch because it's obvious that she is not a good journalist and she does not know anything about Janet Jackson's background. Because why would you ask a lady who's from a family full of Jehovah Witnesses about anything that has to do with politics? You knew that it was going to get you recognition for saying that shit that you said. You set her up. But I got the, I got the interview right here. She says, I wonder where she stands on the forthcoming election. After all, I say, America could be on the verge of voting in its first black female president, Kamala Harris. Y'all just love pushing that damn narrative, huh? But allow me to continue. Well, you know what? They supposedly said, she asked me, she's not black. That's what I heard, that she's Indian. She looks at me expectantly, perhaps, assuming that I have Indian heritage. Well, she's both, I offer. Janet says her father's white. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't watched the news in a few days. She coughs. I was told what they discovered her father to be, which was white. I'm floored at this point. It's well known that Harris's father is a Jamaican economist, a Stanford professor who split from her Indian mother when she was five. Why would you even add that? Because see, not only did you bring up this bullshit ass election, knowing that this lady probably ain't voting anyway, you felt it need to add the fact that her father left her mom when she was five. What does that have to do with anything in the context of this conversation that you're having. But let's get back to the people that want to sit here and uh, cancel Janet Jackson. You can't cancel a legend, baby. She's already solidified. And if I was her, I wouldn't apologize to you motherfuckers for nothing. I wouldn't even sit down with half of you fucking journalists for the way that y'all did her brother. Then he was alive, as well as after he was already put in the ground. The way that y'all were disrespectful the way y'all sat there and y'all rallied around Oprah when she did that bullshit ass documentary or whatever that, that stuff was that she did. And she still wanted to carry on what happened with him and the situation at Neverland Ranch. You guys don't deserve legends at this point because all y'all do is shit on them when they go against the narrative. This lady is not for us. Y'all don't want to listen to the fact that she's not for us. And then y'all get mad when somebody point out the fact that she just decided that she wants to claim to be a black woman. Journalism like this is the reason why a lot of y'all ain't going to have no jobs in the future. Because people who are content creators, people who actually do the work and do research on the people that they're interviewing are going to be taking y'all jobs. Nobody's going to be reading y'all little bullshit articles because it's obvious that the media is owned by the same people that's pushing the narrative and trying to throw this woman our way. Y'all suck at what y'all do. And everybody else who want to sit here and say they're going to cancel Janet Jackson. That lady is well off into her years. She's got way more money than you probably will ever touch in your life. And she doesn't need your support. Because people like myself, the ones who have been supporting her since she came out, she's going to always be Miss Jackson. And from Gary, don't, don't apologize for shit, auntie. Don't, don't apologize for nothing. So I have been getting like the screenshots of the situation that is going on between this individual and Janet Jackson. And you know, I find it very funny. I find it funny how he is always so quick to disrespect women, to put down women. But when Cat Williams said what he said, baby, you had nothing to say. Okay. But I also find it, you know, it is very ironic because when your daughter came to you and spoke about the situation with your best friend harming her you had nothing to say you supported him more than you supported your own daughter so i understand that you hate women all too all together i genuinely find it funny how black people are so willing to to protect Kamala Harris when she is in fact an Indian woman. I don't know why y'all trying to ignore the fact that she's Indian. Why are y'all trying to ignore that? It is mind blowing how black people will see a picture. You will have proof of what it is and black people will ignore it to accept what is comfortable. I find that weird. I genuinely want to understand. Today on August 15th, 2020, I stand before you as the first candidate for vice president 
of the United States of South Asian descent. People of India and to India. So my question to black people would be, well, when she became the vice president, she didn't claim no blackness. She said Asian and Indian. So where did the blackness come into play? I will wait to listen. I find it weird.